Yo, what's going on guys? Sakapoko here, bringing you to Seven Deadly Sins Grand Quest video. This is going over the news and talking about all the fun things that will be happening on August 4th, 2020. So guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, and in today's news for the 8-4 maintenance by CM Gold, who we've never heard of before, is the game is going to undergo maintenance to provide more stable game service. There's more bugs? The fuck? I don't know. Anyways, uh, so first off, we're, we, we heard about that fireworks festival thing, so I'll go talk about that briefly at the end of this. Uh, first off, we got the period's going to be 4, 8, 3 at 10 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, um, all the way till 1 a.m., so it's going to be a three-hour maintenance, so it's going to be half an hour longer than normal. Uh, the details are going to add in two new heroes, as well as a pickup festival draw event. So my guess is it's Esterosa, like I said initially, and then ne the week after is probably going to be Hell Demons. If it's Esterosa this week, great. If it's not Esterosa, they're dropping in something else. We'll see. But they are adding in the brand new fight, Demon Boss Kimimara. And I believe Kimimara is the yellow Pokemon looking dude. I want to say he is. I'll have to go Google it. But I'm pretty sure that's who he is. Um, it is a... It's kind of like the Hawk boss where you go into an event boss and fight one dude. It has uh, two phases, I think, on the hardest difficulty. But I think it's the yellow Pokemon dude. I'll have to go check. Um, the Oh, you know what? You know what? Actually, if it's the yellow Pokemon dude, was he red? Yeah, he was red. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think I think it might be. So blue units are really good for this, which would make no sense. So I'm kind of like I'm kind of confused. So I'm actually not sure who the two units are. I'm gonna have to think about them for just a second. So it might be Esteros, it might not be. But if it's the Pokemon dude, I'm so confused because the Pokemon dude is red and Esteros is green. So why would they come out with the, the Esteros for Pokemon red? Interesting. We'll, we'll talk about that more. Oh, also, there's um, um, I was trying to research this on uh, my tablet, but the the battery died, and um. I was I I was I was going over it with um, with Gemma and we were talking about this and it was actually a really really important issue about Netmarble. Hey Gemma, hey, did you know the diamond bogo has reset? It means you can buy more diamonds with dollars. <laughs> All right, so there's gonna be ending events and bundles. Uh, ending events and bundles. Uh, we have the seven deadly sins attack on Titan diamond event is gonna be leaving of course at 6 p.m. tomorrow. So please get that done prior to 6 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, the Attack on Titan collab of pickup draws is going to be leaving, of course, and all the Attack on Titan event stuff is leaving. So if you did want to pick up anything for Attack on Titan, please make sure to do so before the maintenance starts. Otherwise, you're not going to get shit. Uh, the Imperial Report Titan guys will be leaving. All the Titan stuff is going to be leaving. Blah, 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 blah. The Diamond Perks event is leaving. The Scrapmaster Giant Hawk event is leaving, so make sure you get that done. The Salvage event, RIP and F's in chat for Salvage event, is leaving as well. Auto clear ticket boost event is leaving. Special gold bundles leaving. Um, all of the upgrade bundles for basically all, all the stuff. And of course, the swimsuit cosmetics are leaving as well. So big F's on that. So uh, yeah, that sucks. But uh, let's go ahead and talk more about the Leona's Fire Festival event just very quickly in, in case you guys didn't know about it. The, the Fireworks Festival event is going to be a, a brand new event where you get lots of tickets. And I already went over this in the previous news video, but just in case you didn't know. Um, the, all right, so uh, the, the Fireworks Festival event right here is going to be uh, for... Uh, for day one and day eight, you're going to have five of the normal types of tickets. And then we're also going to have... Uh, the SR tickets for Giant Unknown as well as Human uh, from the 2nd to the 6th day. And then from the 9th to the 13th day, it'll be the Goddess Fairy and um, Demon tickets. Uh, the On the 7th day, you're getting a Part 1 SSR ticket. And finally, on the 14th, you're getting a Part 2 SSR ticket. On the Giant Unknown uh, and Human tickets, feel free to use them at your leisure unless you wanted to save one uh, these these tickets for Droll. Uh, and the only other ones are for the Goddess, Demon, and Fairy tickets. I'm personally saving these tickets just because I want to save them for Demon tickets. But the Human tickets, feel free to burn them at your leisure. Part 1, of course, burn at your leisure. And I'm saving Part 2 tickets right now, but you do, do what you want to do. If you want to go for Red King or something like that, go for it. Really depends on what you're looking for as a player. So, <laughs> um, heads up. I put out an Arthur video uh, recently, and I put out the Arthur video recently because I was going over uh, a very fun unit that had recently come to the game on the Japanese version, been out for a few months, and the Arthur step-up banner happened around this time. 
It was for the 777 download celebration. And there was a lot of players on the global version who were very upset about the 777 download celebration. There was not, there were people who were saying, oh, I didn't get any tickets. I, why is this global JP get all these multis, etc." cetera? Burr. So, um, the next unit that, the unit that came out with the, um, Kimimara, uh, Kimara event, or you can see here, Kimara, to spell differently, um, was Blue SSR Arthur. Uh, if you haven't seen my uh, semi showcase for that, that's, it's, it's, it's over there. It's, it's pretty fun to watch. So go check that out. Um, let's, this was available, this is actually a free multi every single day for 14 days, but it looks like on the global version, we're getting some kind of different ticket structure as well. So he might be free to play, he might not be, we'll see. I'm actually kind of curious to see if they're gonna be coming out with the Arthur very soon here, and if we're getting the tickets for him. The tickets that we got, of course you can see here, are the from the 777 download celebration for Arthur, had this on them. You can see that it was a very, very cool ticket that actually allowed people to get the tickets for the 777 download celebration and get Arthur. But, uh, seeing how they said they're releasing two new heroes, there's a bunch of heroes that happened before this and after this. It would be very interesting to see. But these happened all the way in March, and there's a bunch of heroes that could come out first, and they haven't really released any units that were this far in advance. And I may not be for the Arthur character right away, and they might have a different unit there in mind. Maybe Blue Matrona for the giant Matrona. Maybe a stupid early release for her for no reason whatsoever. That would be interesting. Or it could be a different character. The, the thing that's really interesting about this boss is the Blue SSR Arthur is actually really bad for this boss so the only thing that he has is that the boss is actually a red uh has red affinity and because he has red he's actually a red character it makes it pretty hard to actually kill him because he's red so yeah you get lots of rewards from this boss. i'll go over those in a second but you can't crit him and arthur's whole thing is that you crit so it may not be arthur so don't freak out i'm not 100 percent sure it's gonna be arthur but they said there's gonna be two new heroes Imagine if it was Lost Fate and Arthur. That'd be dumb as fuck. We'd all be like, what the fuck? <laughs> but I doubt it. Um, one, of the th uh, one of the things that we, we've seen is that it could potentially be Esterosa and it could just take the coloring of the boss. So it could be like a blue version instead of a red version. Uh, if it was a green version, if, it was, if the boss was actually a blue boss and it's actually green and red Esterosa, then it's perfect and we're fine. And it'd be really interesting to see the boss actually have full counters against him and everything. That'd be really cool. I'm not sure exactly what they're gonna do here, but that would be one possibility. Um, for the seven point, uh, we had all this for the seven, seven, seven million down celebration, and we'll go over. The, um, we don't need to go over those because that might they might actually take the seven, seven, seven download celebration and move that all the stuff from the seven, seven, seven download celebration, like the tickets that we got for Arthur, the Las Vegas Meliodas tickets, all those, and they might actually just push those for the six month anniversary. That's my guess. So that would happen about one month from tomorrow, from as I'm recording this video, so one month from like a few hours from after you may watch this. Um, that's what my thing is. The other thing that we also got around this time was the remember, remember the past event. These are very difficult. Um, these are very difficult events that allow you to clear them, but they all have very high difficulty. I think this may come around the same time as um, uh, as this because a lot of people's uh, combat class have been very, very much upgraded. And they've been coming out with a lot of rewards, so people may be able to do this. There wasn't a... T um, this is right before Mono and Easton. So the other thing that it could be is Mono and Easton, besides the double Esterosa. It could be just a random Mono Easton. Very, very, very interesting to see that. Because that, uh, we haven't seen an OC banner since Lilia. And seeing Blue Mono and Red Easton on this banner would also be an interesting take. Because Blue Mono... Um, Blue Easton came out, as you can see, between March 12th and March 29th. And uh, it was around the same time as the Kimimara event, which actually happened on the 18th. So it was actually just a week before. So seeing Easton and Mono in this banner would also be something that could be uh, could happen as well. All right, so let's go over the Kimimara event really quickly and talk about it very briefly. So you can see it's gonna have a score-based reward system. Uh, hard gives you 10 points per run, extreme gives you 25 points per run, and hell gives you 50 points per run. During the runs, you actually are able to get fill this progress meter and up the progress meter, you're actually getting lots of rewards. Uh, these will give you gold chests, potions, SR medals, books, SSR ticket, SSR pendant. It could be different rewards, but that's basically what we're getting in the Japanese version back in um, whatever month it was. But the difficulties, are, as you can see, are hard, extreme, and hell. Hell was extremely difficult for some teams, but the team that actually did it very, very easily was a Blue Demon Meliodas and Lilia team. So if you do have a Pierce comp, it actually is relatively easy with that comp. Uh, one of the characters that I um, uh, that people ended up using against that fight was like Blue Nunchuck Vaughn in order to lower the boss's defense skills so that you can do tons of damage to him and just whittle him down very quickly. So that is another strategy you could use. Uh, Escanar was an okay unit here because of the boss's 
type of it, type things as well. Uh, just don't try to use anything that uses a crit. So that would be something that I would stay away from because the boss's crit resistance is so high, it's freaking annoying. I, I You literally can't crit this guy. It's, it's stupid annoying. Um... Going down even um, on here for the, for the exchange shop. The exchange shop, if you can kind of see it over here, they had different materials. There were, you can see here, the red, green, and uh, red and green materials here. These would allow you to get different things um, in the shop. And there are actually three different tabs over here. If you can kind of, I can't actually show you right now. Oh, sorry, this, this is the way the crop is. But there's three different tabs you can see here. And in the three tabs, they have different types of rewards. It starts at green crystals, then goes to red crystals, and then I believe black crystals at the very end. Uh, that allows you to get multiple different types of rewards as you're doing the fight. As far as the fight mechanics go, I'll make a separate video on this fight. It's a really annoying fight, and I really did not enjoy doing it on the Japanese version. But on the global version, I'm hoping that they have reworked it in some way to make it more fun and not as annoying. This is my gear set, by the way, if you need to know. All right, so the first character we went over, of course, is the blue SSR Arthur. Blue SSR Arthur is a very high DPS unit. The first of regular visibility is going to do 240% attack against one enemy. And you can see it does a very large amount of damage. The second regular visibility does 360% attack against a single target and is a massive amount of damage, as you can see there as well. And the third regular does 500% cancel stances and stuns enemies for one turn. It is a very, very strong attack and it's super, super good. The second ability that he has is basically the same as Gother's attack seal. Starts at 120 and then goes to 120 and finally 180. So attack sealing at rank two for one turn and, at, and for three at, uh, sorry, two turns at rank three. Now, Arthur has a very, very strong passive and active passive is very similar to green SSR King. Uh, Green SSR King, if you didn't know, increases critical chance by 10% every time that King gets an ultimate gauge. And will actually double his critical chance by max rank. Um, but the inverse of that is Arthur is actually going to increase his critical damage by 10% uh, per ultimate gauge orb. And at max, it's going to give him an extra 50%, giving him a total of 100% extra attack, uh, sorry, crit damage at max ultimate. And his ultimate ability is going to be a sever base attack, giving him double critical chance, crit, giving him starting at 560% critical chance and going all the way up to 840%. Now, he actually has two major links, and the one I prefer using is Merlin, because Merlin gives him a 19.2% crit chance of, of value, as well as the other one you can use is Green or Blue Meliodas, giving him 280 attack. Overall, he has very high substats and stats. For his actual physical cosmetic over here, you can see he gets the shirtless Ardor cosmetic, which gives him an extra 6% uh, crit resistance. And for his other cosmetics that he does receive, he just receives two more armor pieces, uh, one of which is going to be this SSR Arthur cosmetic here. And the other cosmetic that he really does receive is going to be the King Arthur cosmetic, which looks totally bitchin'. All right, the next unit list we're going to have is going to be Blue Easton. And Blue Easton is a uh, every effect attack character that does 150% attack on the first attack and goes up to 180 and finally 300%. It's a very similar ability to Eskinor's ultimate ability, uh, sorry, Ikimasa ability, where it does uh, a increase ultimate gauge by plus one at the rank two ability and, of course, increase it by plus two of this ability. Um, Easton is going to have a very, very nice buff, and the buff is going to be the exact same as Green Helbrum. Green Helbrum's buff increases attack skills by 15%, 20%, and 30% respectively. Attack-related stats are all pierce rate, crit chance, uh, crit damage, as well as attack values. And it goes... And since it goes up from 15 to 30, it gives you a very nice bonus. The ultimate ability for Easton is going to be... Uh, the same as Gustav's, where you have the inflict spike damage equal to 350% damage against all enemies. Spike will increase critical damage dealt by um, by two times. Um, it starts at 350% and goes up to 525% at maximum. Um, with Easton, you can see here that she has a, a passive ability that increases her basic stats by 5% per buff on all allies and enemies, giving her a total of 25% extra stats if she starts into the room. Overall, for the Blue Easton variant, she is actually the worst of the two variants. She has an okay set of substats, but a very low amount of crit chance as well as crit damage uh, to start with. But she does have pretty decent defensive stats at 40% resistance, 50% crit resistance, and 20% crit defense. Her associations, of course, are going to be Lilia and Bond, neither of which give her a ton of stuff except for crit resistance or regen. But she has a lot of cosmetics, and as you can see, uh, many of them are waifu. This is the newest cre uh, one for Summer Easton. This one right here is one of the ones that you can actually pick up. Here's another one. Uh, and this one looks awesome. <laughs> And another one. I believe this is the one we got from the UR upgrade. Uh, this is the base for the green Easton. And that's it. There's actually one more that I didn't end up picking up. Uh, for weapons, she has books. And the books start out at 
4% re pierce rate, go up to 4% uh, critical damage, 1% uh, crit chance, 6% crit damage. This one has 2% pierce rate and 2% crit resistance as well as crit, 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 crit chance. And then this one has 1% crit chance as well as 4% crit damage. There is another book that you can get for her with a heart on it that actually gives you 1% uh, crit chance as well as 4% crit damage. I elected not to get it because I really just did not want to pay uh, money for like 1% crit chance. Uh, moving on for her headpieces, uh, she does have another headpiece as well, and it does have lifesteal on it, which is really good. But uh, the, she has this Noblesse Easton one. They had some long-haired ones, a Sea Witch one that you can pick up. This one is a headpiece that you can get for, I believe, um, this is an SSR head. No, this is one of the UR cosmetics you pick up for her. I believe this is an SSR one. I'm going to check, say. And then this one right here is the one you get from the Summer Easton or the Summer Event. There's another one that you can get over here that I did not pick up and is not available to see. And why is this kind of off the screen? Has it been like that the whole time? I'm not re-recording, fuck it. <laughs> we could see the whole thing the whole time, so fuck it, right? You could see all the attacks, right? One, if you could see the attacks, two, if you couldn't see the attacks. Next up, we have the waifu mono, and I just like watching that happen. All right, next on the list we're going to be going over is Mono. And Mono has a first ability that is going to inflict Sever, which is basically double critical chance, the same for Arthur. But Mono is a character that always crits because her crit chance is ridiculous. Um, this character has a, uh, a critical chance at 160, going up to 240. And then finally, she's going to end up at 400% uh, crit uh, damage at the maximum rank. And she has some insanely cool animations. It's possibly one of the coolest looking characters in the entire game. The second ability is going to be a single target attack that does poison. And she throws daggers at people and it looks awesome. Poison, of course, lasts for three turns and does 50% of the damage dealt over the course of three turns. And as you can see, Mono almost always crits. On the second rank, it's 210% uh, to whatever the attack. And finally, at the max rank, it is at 350%. God, this character looks cool. Uh, for the ultimate belief for Mono, Mono is going to deal 455% uh, attack against one enemy and make them bleed for two turns. The bleed effect is basically going to do 80% of her attack over the course of two turns. It starts at 455% attack and goes all the way up to 683%. Now for Mono, uh, she has the passive ability called Assassin. And Assassin is going to increase the damage dealt by 50% if attacking enemies with a bleed, poison, or shock debuff. Um, essentially, it's... It's like weakness. I think it actually, uh, I think it's mistranslated initially. Essentially, if they have a debuff, she gets 50% extra damage, I think. So if you put a debuff first, and then she gives she gives basically a weakness-based attack, I'm not 100% sure. Let's go find out. There's debuffs. Let's go Let's go hit him with this. Does this do more? It feels like it does more. Right? Let's go reset it. Yeah, definitely does more. So any, it's a weakness. So it's basically 50% weakness based attack. So essentially you put up the bleed and then use the and then use the three star attack afterward and the bleed doesn't do more damage. We initially thought it made the bleed do more damage, but it actually what it does, it's a weakness based attack so that she does more damage on her at second attack. But you can see the second attack here doing 56,000 at level 60 is pretty good. But uh, the thing that really makes Mono interesting is that Mono is was one of the least used characters on the JP version because we all thought it increased the bleed or poison effects, but it doesn't and it's actually a weakness based effect. So it's very interesting. So the first thing about Mono is that she has a um, a 10% pierce rate, which is very, very low, 30% resistance rate, 20% regeneration rate, all of which not super great for this pierce meta. And of course she has 80% crit chance as well as 130% crit damage. So she does crit a very large amount of the time, but because she does have very, very lo low crit damage, she doesn't crit for a ton. So a unit like Death Pierce may use, her, may give her a lot more edge in fights, and we're gonna have to see if she does work out. I don't have all the cosmetics in the world for Mono, but uh, I do have some, and they are waifu and free to play. She also has 80% crit defense, which is really, really interesting for any other counter crit teams. Oh yeah, and 20% uh, lifesteal. So for Mono, the initial cosmetic that we got for her is this one looking right here. It has crit resistance on it, and oh my god, is it waifu, it is some, crazy awesome stuff this is her actual ur cosmetic this is what she gets for a raw ur cosmetic and again uber waifu next thing up we have the free to play event lilia event cosmetic for her and oh my god is it waifu holy crap 
<laughs> and then we have, of course, the swimsuit cosmetic, all of which are free to play. And oh my god, is she a waifu. Next up, we have her SSR cosmetic. You can see here, this is the one that you get from the Affinity Reward. This one right here is the base cosmetic that she actually has, and oh my god, is she waifu. Uh, right here is the purple one that you actually get from the uh, Lilia event cut as well, and it is bitching. I love it. Uh, right here we have, um, sorry, this was not from Affinity. This was this one was from the summer event. Sorry, sorry. This was the summer event one. My bad. <laughs> These are the summer event sorts. Um, this was the summer event headpiece you can see here from the goggles. This is her normal actual headpiece. And here's her god. I love this headpiece. Cannot wait to use it. It is amazing headpiece that you get from the Evil Lily event. This right here is her actual headpiece that she gets from Affinity Rewards. So she gets a ton of free cosmetics and she waifu AF. So should you build her out? I've never seen anyone do it. Uh, I've never seen anyone try to do this and do it well. Uh, I'm super curious. Currently, my mono is at 85% crit chance as well as 71% crit damage. But right now, she has, uh, looks like, two pieces of crit damage gear on. So, like, there's an extra 20% right there. So, minus that, it's at 150. Uh, I mean, 151 ain't bad. No cap. 151 ain't bad. That's not bad. That's, uh, I think it's okay. Uh, there's no other rules on here. So, I mean, 151 ain't bad. Uh, it's definitely a big upgrade. I haven't done any Super Awakenings on her either, and I was actually kind of considering it. I do have some dupes of her, and I was really considering trying her out because she's a waifu, bro, and you definitely want to get UR gear in the waifus for no specific reason whatsoever. Oh, and yeah, now she's at 25% live steal. The fuck, bro? All right, guys, well, my name is Jack Poco. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this news video. It was a little bit longer because, you know, there was waifus in it, and I couldn't stop. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, all the fun stuff. You have to have a great rest of your day.